Oh, okay. I'll project now. This is the green one. This is the green one. We're on the green screen, folks. We're on the green screen. Is everybody about ready to get going here? Can you hear us? Are we going to dance party? It's future media, you know, we're going to say it's 8 o'clock instead of 11 o'clock. So, uh, I want to get started here so uh, we can actually, uh, and I, I want, and that's exactly the point, uh, should be taking our order, and the way it works here at Eurasia with our meetings, I mean, they're very kind, George is a great owner, and we've been doing this for a while now, so... What the process is, they'll take your order, they'll take your card, they'll put the digits, they'll run the card, so when you're ready to leave, it, she's ready to have you leave. So it's easy, simple. Do it in advance, so it's cleaned up, it's convenient, it's easy access, and then you can enjoy a fine meal while we're training and, and teaching you about uh, future media. And the price is $15, it's including everything, you know, drink, meal, uh, set, soup and salad and and tip. So it's a good deal and it's a great deal. If you're not required to purchase lunch, so don't panic if, if that's the case. So, uh, however, it is a, it's a benefit to you, so we can actually have that available. So, any questions? Thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate your your time and effort time and effort to get here today. And I know that there's a lot of things that are taking place, and um, we want to get things rolling with introductions. Uh, Marion, do you want to you want to uh, launch the introductions? I'm going to turn the music down, and we'll get this party started. Okay, while she's taking orders, I'd like to know who you all are. I see some brand new faces. So we're not going to take a whole lot of time, but we, we want to know what your name is and the name of your company. So let's start off right away. Right here, Red. Red O'Loughlin. Uh, Red O'Loughlin, health and wellness guru. My website is redoloughlin.com. You're awesome. <laughs> Standing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sue Kopinski. And uh, two things. Let's see here. I do local marketing online for small businesses. And What's the name it's called Local PR Online. And dot com? Mm -hmm. Okay. Local PR Online dot com. All right. Thank you. We're recording this. That's why I'm forcing you to stand up and get on the microphone. That's our speaker. Steve? Yes, you have to stand up. <laughs> my name's Steve Longbotham, and I'm here representing myself, not my company, uh, because I find the uh, subject interesting, yeah, but I am here um, also, I guess, representing uh, the meetup, uh, the uh, Houston Technological Singularity Meetup. Awesome. Did you hear that? On meetup. Thank you, Russ. Christy. Hey. This is Christy Ruiz, and I'm with Christy's Portals. Yeah, dot com. <laughs> Christiesportals.com. That that'll ooh, that's interesting, isn't it? Intriguing. We have to go and see what that is. Stephanie. Hello. Let's hear myself on this. Hi, I'm Stephanie McDaniel and my uh, website is transworks.com. That's works with an E, not an O. And uh, I am a certified consulting hypnotist here in Houston. So that's it. Trans, trance, trance, transworks.com. And I'll make my way over there. Well, hello there, Missy. Oh, yeah, I understand. Uh, What's your name, Larry? <laughs> my name's Larry Sicho. I, um, I actually just started blogging, but in my daytime job, I have a recruiting company. I'm in IT and engineering, and Really, just curious about learning as much as I can about podcasting and blogging and stuff like that. So. Awesome, Larry. Thank you. Uh, nobody gets this mic from me. <laughs> T. Allen Haynes, immediatecelebritystatus.com, helping you claim your immediate celebrity status. Ooh. We all want to be a celebrity, don't we? 
Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I, I can't get through. I'm sorry. There you go. How you doing? My name is Michael G. Davis, partner with Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. So if you're looking to purchase or sell a home or if you have a friend or family member that's looking, then we're an excellent resource to help you navigate any real estate transaction. And you, we can be found at brooksanddavis.com. Brooksanddavis.com. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Talabi. I'm a realtor with Brooks and Davis, and this is my broker. All right. Okay, can't get through. No way. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eva, and I am a co-owner of IWantNinja.com, and we do web design, web development, web hosting. Awesome. Love it. I swear. I swear. Hi, my name is Kevin. I'm also with IWantNinja.com, where we make your website dreams a reality. <laughs> Website ninja.com. I want ninja.com. I want ninja.com. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Sorry to make you stand up, but you project better that way. Oh, my name is Jan- <laughs> My name's Janet Scudder. I'm an investment advisor representative. And I don't know any of this stuff, which is why I'm here. What's the name of your website? I don't have a website. Oh, hey, website designers. Fresh meat right here. <laughs> Hello, my name is Malin Hargrove. I'm the owner of Abstract Solutions. We're online marketing and mobile web design. Oh, yeah. See? Watch out, Janet. (laughs) Hello, I'm Heather Arnold. I'm actually with Keller Williams Memorial, but I just started blogging, and I'm writing a book, and that's why I'm here. Yay. Blogging. We love blogging. Hi, I'm Bruce Reagan, and I'm with uh, Bruce's Technical support. Uh, I do audio uh, editing and stuff and like that. And, and, and more. more. And more, yeah. <laughs> I'm learning more from, from Marianne and, and Becky. So. He's an intern. Isn't that awesome? Everybody needs an intern, right? And he's really good. Whatever I tell him to do, he's like, okay. I'm like, all right. <laughs> no, he's really good. He's been in IT all his life, and he's just left the corporate world. So now he's wanting to do his own thing. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. So he can do whatever he wants, and that's what I told him. What do you want to do? He's like, I don't know. So I'm giving him all his choices. It's awesome. That's right. That's right. So I'm Marianne LaSalle, and we do have one more person in the back. I do not want to forget Louise, but she's busy. So I'll tell you a little bit about me, and I'll tell you a little bit about Russ. Thank you, Russ. Um, So... Russ and I are both in the IT industry, and we love networking. So what a better way to feed our soul and to share all this great technology with the world than to have the Future Media Association. So that's why we're here. We want to share. We want to educate. We want to expose. We want to get in there and dive in. And we want you to come with us. Russ? I am here today only so you can have the support you need to learn and understand what's going on. And I also want to, uh, you know, thank everyone for being here, like I said in the advance. Marion LaSalle has been a trooper. We've been in and out of networking. Red's been a... Uh, you know, an advocate for networking and and been out there and doing speaking, engaging. Tracy is a a huge advocate for some of these things. And what business owners need today is really just that essence of how do I figure it out? You know, I'm I'm 80% of the way there and I just need to figure out this last little, you know, 10, 15, 20%. And it's it's that little bit that we want to help with. You know, you know what you need to do. You know what you need want you want to do when you get up in the morning, and you know what you have, and you don't. You know what you don't have. So, what we want to offer and assist you with is that last step of the way in order to get you going on your future. You know, the media is changing. There's something taking place every single day that is is going to evolve and allow you to make your business easier, your message brighter, and making sure that you can actually have access to everything that's out there. You know, the truck rolls and the 
radio towers and the transmitters and all the engineers that are required to get your voice out, it, it's no longer necessary. So I'm really passionate about this. And Marianne and I have, have uh, you know, been working on this thing, and we really, really need your help. And, you know, just ask questions. Larry asked what we, you know, about, you know, how do I get traffic? Bam. All of a sudden we have somebody talking. Susan Hamilton here is, uh, she's just uh, a rock star, and we'll talk a little bit about her and give her a proper introduction. However, we will bring things to the table that you ask for and you need help with. So you just have to ask for it so we can help you get to that point. And I want to give a big shout out to Louise. And Louise Dewey here is actually a client of mine and a dear friend. And Louise, tell a little bit about what you're doing right now. Well, I am known as Lady Lou, the baby boomer babe. My audience is the baby boomer women over 50. I'm helping them learn that there is more to life after 50 so that they can go out and have fun, make new friends, do things that are interesting to them, and learn. Sometimes we stop learning after 50. The day I stop learning will be in my grave. I have gone on. (laughs) So if you know any baby boomers in your life, I don't think there's maybe you couple of them here. (laughs) But if you know any, just tell them to Google the Baby Boomer Babe on Meetup. We have our meetings. In fact, it's this coming Thursday right here. And I'm also having a birthday party right here on Saturday if anybody's interested. You're welcome to come. I turn 70. Give her a big round of applause. It's awesome. It's awesome. So, Marion, what's next on the... uh program today? Well, I want to make sure everybody put two cards in because we we are going to have two different drawings, two giveaways. Our speaker has a nice giveaway and so do we. So make sure if you didn't already, you give your cards to Louise. Okay. And then um, I wanted to do a little deep dive into a technology or a tool every time we meet. And so Russ and I, this last week, we're working and fiddling around and playing. We really were playing. Uh, with the That's new, how we play. I know. Uh, with the new technology, it's called Ringer. Raise your hand if you've heard of Ringer. Some okay. of you were, yeah, some of you, uh, were here at the event previously when uh, we had Tim Sinclair on there. So. That's right. So uh, Russ wanted me to remind you that we have quite a bit of information already online Uh, about Ringer, and where can they find that information? I know we have videos, audios. Is it on the website? Uh, The link is not on the website at this moment, but you can actually go on YouTube and get a link, or you can send us a message. It's on Facebook. We have a Facebook group, and if you want to uh, join that group, like it, you can access the information there at Facebook anytime. Okay. Future Media Association. All right, so what Ringer is... And they just updated their whole system so it's working even better than it did before. Is it, Right now it's working with iOS devices, your iPhone, anything Apple, right? But it will eventually go into your PCs and any, any device. Android. Of course, Android. Isn't that, yeah, it's true. Any, any device at all, and I think they're looking at early this year. So that means between now and June, right? Well, I hope before uh, Podcast 15 hits in August, the 1st of August. So we'll see Tim Sinclair there. So I'm going to explain what it does and then how it works. Okay, so what it does is it records my voice on a telephone, talking to someone like Russ or interviewing somebody for a podcast. It records my, my voice. It records his voice separately. It pulls it up into a software and makes you sound better than you ever thought you could. It's amazing. The software, I was like, that's me? That's my voice? Oh, that sounds pretty good. (laughs) But it's so easy. You just need an email address. It's an app on the phone. It's free right now. I would highly recommend you trying it. If you have a friend who's got an iPhone, if you don't, borrow it just to check out this new technology. So 
I invited Russ with an email. He accepted the invitation on his phone. It counted down three, two, one. We started the recording. When it was over, we hit the done button. It ran up to their, so- their software. It did what it needed to do. And then it sent me a message that said, I now have the files. So all I had to do was click on that, and I could see a zip file that sent me an email, and I could see the zip file, and inside the zip file were four files, me, Russ, and then together in stereo and mono. So if you're into podcasting, you know exactly what that means. Now your editor, like Bruce over here who edits audio, he can now, if somebody's coughing or a dog is barking on one particular person's side, he can edit that out. Or if it's perfect all the way through, you can just edit one file. Any questions? Yes, Red. Can I understand from May or June for Android, so that's still a reasonable day? You know, okay, so they're moving it up. It sounds like maybe the end of March. Cross your fingers. I talked to him yesterday over email, and he said that they're going to have another iOS app release in the next two weeks, and then uh, the uh, the Android app will be following that. He didn't have an exact time limit on it, though. Stephanie. So it's, they're getting closer. Okay. It's spelled R-I-N-G-R dot U-S. R-I-N-G-R dot U-S. If you go to the App Store on, on Apple... And just type in R I N G R, it'll come up. And Russ, why don't you explain a little bit about what that means to a podcaster? How does that free us? Well, a lot of podcasting is done interview style. And depending on what you want to do, you know, we have a couple of realtors in the house. And I, I've always had this idea, and you can, you can bounce it off here, is that one of the things that, um, industry leaders need is an audience and a conversation with somebody that is also in that group so they can actually extend their information, educate the audience, and allow you to become the authority in the market. And interviews are a good way to get that, and it does two things for you. It does, one, it allows you to get some good information that you can share with others without having to be face-to-face in front of that audience one-to-one. So it's a one-to-many relationship, so you can leverage your time much more effectively. Number two, what it does is also allows you to connect with people that you want to learn from. And and just like this meeting, you know, we can invite guests here that know more about a subject than we uh, that we want to know more about, and then we can learn from that process. So... At, if you make the interview process easier, you know, you have to, it's not Skype, you don't have to write I can, you don't have to do all of these things and get a, you know, a mix minus and, you know, mixing board and there's a lot of technology behind it. If you can minimize that technology hurdle and make it easy to interview somebody and get that up there on a platform you can share, it's night and day. It's a game changer. I was talking to our speaker last night. We had a nice little conversation. You know, there's a subset of people who travel around the country in a motorhome. They sell their house and they just travel around. Wouldn't that be cool? Now you can podcast on the road with a phone. And you don't don't have to worry about the background noise. I, I don't understand the software yet, but here's the big thing that you need to really hear. Ready? It's not going to stop at podcasting. They're going to use this technology for video, too. I don't understand what that means yet, but think about that. Think about that. You can videotape with your phone. Well, you're doing it now. Louise is doing it now with Zoom. So, you know, you're, even though you're in front of a desktop recording audio in front of a video camera, it's, it's much larger than what podcasting, um, the description of podcasting allows. It's audio on demand. It's creating media as you are live. You know, it's a live stream event. It's the opportunity to get that voice out immediately and then recast that. You know, it's a personal broadcast is what it is. It's a really, ultimately, personally broadcasting your message 
and then rebroadcasting that. Just like you know, you can see uh, you know old episodes of the Simpsons, Simpsons or you know Seinfeld, you know whatever. This is the same thing. As you educate your audience and you connect with everybody, what you're doing is allowing that information to be evergreen, to go out and help other people. And as you build your audience and your community and you understand exactly what needs to take place, then you can, you know, it's not about the technology. You don't have to know about the technology when these things take place. So it's, it's much easier, much easier to go along the way. So uh, any questions about that? Any, any questions in, in terms of uh, what's taking place in, in the podcasting world as we do a deep dive on that technology and a review? Steve. When you have these two different files, one of him and one of you, and you're editing one file, uh, does it automatically combine the two files once you edit one of the files? No. Well, let me ex- let me explain it. You receive. There's going to be an individual file from the interview. If I'm sending a file, or if I'm doing an interview with Marion, I'll have my phone recorded, and it'll only have my voice recorded on my phone, and then her phone will have her voice recorded on that. That's two of the four files. And then those files are combined to two other files, one stereo, so you'll have her voice in one speaker and my voice in another speaker. So it's stereo, it's mono stereo, and then they'll have one that's combined, which will be both our voices together, which is mono. And what that allows the editor to do is actually take, say, for instance, I, I have you know, a cough or a hum or a, you know, something in the background you want to remove during the editing process. I can take that single file, or I can work on the stereo file to remove that, and then bring it together, mix it down to mono, and then publish that. So it, it offers a lot of flexibility is, is, I think, the bottom line that we want to really make, draw, drive the point home is, is that it's, it's amazing technology that's it's part of a bigger picture. Uh, you know, like uh, there's other things, Mirrorcast. Mirrorcast is like the YouTube, uh, you know, there's uh, Ustream, there's other video platforms that are also becoming very easy that Marion and I will be working on explaining uh, some of that stuff that is taking place. So it'll be really easy for us to um, you know, do a video explaining this technology for you. And you can also take the audio and use it and repurpose that somewhere else as well. So any other questions? Did that answer your question, Steve? Probably more than Okay. <laughs> so every meeting we're going to have a deep dive. If there's something you want to know more about, you want us to test it for you, <laughs> We'll do a video. We'll do. We'll, we'll really deep dive into it. So please let us know. Do you have the button on our website yet that they can push and send a voicemail? No. Okay, that's coming, right? I'm a slacker. <laughs> well, for those of you who are new, just so you know, this is a brand new association, right? So we're just getting started. If you have advice or if you have suggestions or you have information, you want to be a sponsor, Please let us know what that is, and we'll take care of it. We are Johnny on the spot. Am I right? Absolutely. All right. He said he wanted to know about how to get traffic to his blog, how to get traffic to his podcast. Well, that's what we're going to have today. So I'd like to introduce to you our very first sponsor, Malin. Come on up. Malin's All right, Malin. Love our sponsors; they help us so much. So Malin's going to tell you a little bit about not only his business but his meetup too, because I think everybody here would want to go to one of your meetups. And you uh, get the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my business is Abstract Solutions. We're online marketing, uh, website design, mobile app design, um, development, social media, SEO. Uh, we also do print marketing, graphic design, logos. So we can help you with all your uh, online needs and help uh, you expand your reach so that (laughs) the world can find you. Uh, For Meetup, I have two Meetup groups that are beneficial to anybody who wants to take advantage of them. The first is Small Business Alliance. It's business-to-business networking. 
and we have several meetups a month, and it's an opportunity to get out there and network your business with other small businesses, emerging businesses, and people that are interested in building a business. We also are uh, starting to bring in speakers and uh, provide a little bit of professional information for you as well. The other group I run is a large social networking group for uh, young, young at heart professionals in the city. The group is called Social Young Professionals. We're 3,500 members strong, and we have a large number of events happening each and every month. And we're actually in the process of turning the meetup group into an actual organization. So we have the website, social media channels, blogs. Uh, we're contemplating a digital magazine at this point. So we have a lot of stuff in the works for that group as well. Awesome. Okay, so um, there's a couple more things, and then I want to bring our speaker up. Uh, well, just a meeting overview. Um, you know, I think you, those that have been here, kind of understand the structure. Twice a month, you can actually connect with us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and make sure that we're active and share this. I mean, you know, without the organization, uh, you know, we. We can't share it, you can't learn it, and it's really up to you to help us distribute the information in, in a social way. I mean, we're, we are social, we are available, and so I want to make sure that we have that opportunity. Red, you had a comment as well? Real quickly. Real quickly. I knew the meeting was today, but I didn't see anything on Facebook, and I wasn't sure where to go, and uh, I sent out an instant message to Tracy and to Marianne last night saying, is our meeting today? What should I do next time? I'll tell you the best way to get there. And this is in development. You know, this you can go to the website, futuremediaassociation.com. Cool happenings. You click on that. You go to the bottom. You'll, you'll see the meetup schedule. Everything else, you can click on that. It'll take you right to meetup. You can sign in, log in, and get connected. Or you can go to Eventbrite if you, if you prefer Eventbrite. You can still connect with Eventbrite. And much like what Malin was saying, you know, as we do grow and develop, we'll include new uh, active participants in there. We'll do audio, video, uh, you know, newsletter style events, you know, so we can inc uh, increase the connection to the community. So help us grow, watch us grow, be part of the community. I think I think uh, I think we're uh, about ready. <laughs> uh, take me a we might have to carry it on a little bit. That's all right. It'll take me a minute to tell you about her. Yeah. So Susan Hamilton, as you can see, she has the Offbeat Business Show and Magazine, and you can go to offbeatbusiness.com to see more information. I am a writer for her magazine, so you have. You have to go and look at it, right? You have to go and read my articles. And she's asked me to step it up and show you more tools. So I'm going to have to, like, step it up here. So starting next month, I'll have even more information for you. So how about that? So Susan is from Dallas, and she is a real go-getter. I look up to her in ways that I just, I'm amazed. Every time I talk to her, I am thinking about, the things that she has in her sights, I just want to hold on and, you know, go with her. Because think about it. You have a business. You have a business idea. You learn everything you need to know. And then you go for it. Is that what you've done with your business? Or has it taken you just a little bit longer? Because you get stuck with the technology. You get stuck with all the things that, right? Okay, so we can all learn from Susan. The Offbeat Business Show is talking about what it takes to be a business owner and fly. So I can't wait for her to come up here and tell you a little bit more about the information she has for us today. Now, I know because I'm a speaker that she can speak a lot about a lot of different topics. But today we've asked her to speak specifically about traffic. 
So we're going to learn more about how to get traffic to your blog and to your podcast. But do you think you could take these same techniques and use it to drive traffic somewhere else? Of course you can. So get out your pens, get out your paper. Let's start taking some notes. Susan Hamilton, come on up. I hope it's warmer up here. Doggone, I'm cold. <laughs> I'm coming down from Dallas. I knew you guys would have it in the 80s today, so I tried to be ready. I'm real excited to be here. I've heard a lot about what's going on with the Future Media Association. And first of all, do we dig the name or what? Future Media Association. This is exactly what's happening today. And what I love is that for years what I've done is worked with business owners, right about 50 plus, that are changing the way they're doing business or adding something new to the way they do business, and they look at the online uh, atmosphere and go, ah, do I have to do that? What's kind of cool about this group that I'm noticing is some of you, uh, actually probably most, can I get a hands up for how many of you are working with other businesses to help them develop a web presence? And then the rest of you have your own businesses and you're looking to develop a better web presence so that you can be stronger in that. So I'm going to speak to both of you in in, in this one uh, manner because I believe that it takes a passion to do anything. Uh, You know, everybody in their life has a defining moment that changes who they are. I really hope something in your life has happened to cause you to do what you're doing with some serious fire, that you're excited about doing it all the time. Because if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to stay with what it's going to take in the online environment today. Because those defining behaviors, hey, that's what molds us. And what we're going to have to do consistently on a regular basis is make sure our voices are heard, but in such a way that it's not about us. It's about them. It's about the people that we serve. They have to know that we're their advocate today. So I'm, kind of, I'm going to give you some information that is going to help you, A, work with your web clients better and help you understand what it is you're doing when we're driving traffic. And can I just say, without insulting anyone, that we are not driving traffic. If you're driving traffic, you got the wrong focus. Please, can we change our language here? We're attracting ideal clients that can afford to do business with us because you could do absolutely everything great so, uh, with your SEO and absolutely great Uh, all the way, do everything everybody tells you to do online and still not close that sale. Or you could end up in a situation where the phone's ringing all the time and you're taking care of business that you cannot afford to take care of. Is that what you want? So is that, no, it's not. You don't want to take care of it. You don't want to be bogged down with a bunch of things that, yeah, you want to help them. you got a passion. You, You don't ever want to have somebody cross your path and you can't take care of them, right? You want to give them everything. The problem is... If you spend all your time going after that kind of business, you're not going to be free to go after the business that can afford to pay for you. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is how to get real traffic, how to attract the type of business that you want using these techniques that you need to understand. The first thing you need to understand is the purpose of copy. Uh, I've got worksheets in front of you. I'm really not sure if I'm going to go in that order or not. I'm going to grab one and just see. But basically, thank you. Um, basically, what I want you to understand is that there's a purpose with copy. Does that, when I'm talking about the word copy, who understands what, that, what I mean by that? What's copy? What's marketing copy? Marian? Okay, I'm going to punch that up a little bit and help you understand that if your marketing copy is not causing three things to happen, you are not writing effective marketing copy. Marketing copy is, is copy specific to close a sale. You want somebody to get an appointment with me right now. Uh, you want a phone number. You want somebody calling you immediately. Or you want them to press the buy now button. It's getting done right now. And that third thing it should be accomplishing is getting an email address. Does anybody know why we need that email address? And why that's just as good as your community marketing? Interesting. I'd l- I want you all to know that your email subscribers given you permission to talk to them about marketing. And this person is 50% closer to the warmer down the pipeline of a sale than all of your friends and social media likes combined in the entire world on every single platform. Does that blow your mind? Yeah. Let's remember this is a valuable, valuable people that we're talking to with our email. 
and it is absolutely, absolutely content. So if our copy is written in such a way that the person who reads it says, man, I'm an idiot if I don't call you right now. Man, I cannot imagine not pressing the buy now button. I got to at least give you my email address, right? If you can't get them that far, you're not going to close the sale no matter what I help you do today, no matter how many people come through. That's a very, very important thing to be able to do on your website. And copy exists on your service pages, on your product pages. It's your speaker page. It's your meetup page. All right? It's all of those things that you want somebody to have a decisive action, and they're going to move at that moment. But even if you get that right, friends, who's going to see it? Now, now, now we're going to get what, what, what the meat of the, of the thing. Because your content is your breadcrumbs to your copy. It has a purpose. Your content is bringing people to that understanding in a much more gentle way, in a conversational way, in a way that lets them know that you are their resource. They need to know they can trust you, and content allows you to do that. There's five different kind of, co of content that I'm going to kind of go over quickly and we'll go over in a little more detail that everybody needs to have on their website on a regular basis because every, what, if you're really serving your audience, they're coming to your website looking for things their way, aren't they? And so we have to give them that video. We have to give them the audio. We have to give them the infographic. And when I talk about a branded infographic, there is a specific way you want to do that. You don't want to just put an infographic out there in the web that doesn't have your, your website name, doesn't have the name of your company on it. All right, I'm just going to go over these quickly. I'll go over them in more detail in a minute. But the, others, the other one would be branded images. Okay? Any image that you share that comes out of your company needs to be associated with you because it's going to get shared if you're doing the job right. And it, it, as far as it goes, everything you ever do is going to be a ripple effect in your business, whether you do absolutely nothing or whether you do great things. So pay very close attention to the fact that it impacts everyone around you. And that message leaves, and it keeps moving. And it does that largely when we're also engaged like this. Don't think your online community is not very, very involved in the people that you're working with on a regular basis. We can get too tied up not paying attention to what's going on in this world. One of the reasons that the Offbeat Business Show is doing the job that it's doing uh, is, be is because we realize that if we can help other business owners do something uh, better so that they have more time and they have more money, they're going to be able to impact positive change in their community. That's a passion. That lights me up. That gets me fired up all the time. I I if it's helping our, our youth... Our veterans, right? If it's helping health care, taxes, all of these things matter, and they matter to all of us. So when you are thinking about how you're, you're putting your content together, you really need to think about the people in your audience, what's hitting them, and make sure you're talking to that. Make sure that's a part of the way you're communicating with them. Make sure that they realize that you're their advocate, because this is the person, this isn't just a number. This is a person that you're going to communicate with and hopefully build a relationship with online, hopefully run into them networking. Or if you do travels as your business grows, you're going to want to make sure that that personable aspect rings true. So at when, when I said I wanted to go back to the pieces of, of, of copy, when we talk about audio and video, how many of you are using audio and video right now? Awesome. I, I, are we making sure we're, we're using our text correctly through audio and video? Does anybody know what I'm talking about with that? You're, you've got a description area. Every time you load that, you've got a description area. Don't ignore it. Make sure your descriptions are, are taken care of. Because when, you, when you're looking at algorithms, they need to know. These, in, these, ro I'm so cold. <laughs> these robots that are indexing your website, you're sweet. Um, they need to be able to see what, they need to be able to read exactly what it is they're looking at. They're not looking at numbers. <laughs> oh, I think cold. Thank you, Susan. Oh, okay, now hopefully I'll make more sense. All right. Um, so 
it's easy to forget with audio and video to fill out that description area. And specifically, it's easy to forget to add your website address to that description area. Okay, you want your website address in that. If they see your video on YouTube, they may still not know how to find you, right? Make sure your website address, complete the, complete the URL, make it a link, HTTP. Okay, do the whole thing. And another thing that people don't realize is that handful of sentences, that two or three sentences that describes what they're seeing using keywords, that's awesome for your SEO. And that third thing you need to make sure you're doing is a call to action, CTA. You have to have a call to action in that description. That's good for your audios and your videos, and they're easy to forget. So here's, here's a way to understand SEO a little bit uh, so I can fill you out. Who understands SEO? Uh, basically what it does. Oh, I, I'm just going to drill it, you know, real basic. Anything digital that's ever existed online exists in a great big content pool. That's all it is. It's, uh, it's existing stuff. When I hear people say, I don't want to get involved in all that. I don't want to do all that. I have to say, but everyone else, if you don't like what they're doing and you're not contributing, that's like saying, I don't care. I don't like who's vote in office, but I didn't bother looking and I didn't bother voting. Do you have a right to say that? Contribute. Be a part of what's going on out there. And realize that your content's much more important than you think it is because this is a pool of information. And why isn't your stuff there? Because what you got to say is very, 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 very important. It's very important. Well, what they're doing is connecting the language of your website, connecting the language, uh, uh, the name of your company, your geographic location, and the information your searcher is using to type in. They're connecting that information. That's all, that's all SEO is. They're deciding whether or not they pull you up based on that information. And if they don't pull you up based on that information, I want you to consider what it looks like when you, when you are typing into search results. You've seen the sponsored boxes. Do you know what those are? Do you know what sponsored ads are? Sponsored ads means that business owner just paid by the word to get you to click. And if you don't buy it, just cost them money. Every single word in that sponsored ad has a value. When I started in this business in 2006, you could buy a word for $5. That same word is going to cost you 50 bucks today. They're not kidding around. They want to know everything about you. That data, the, the way they can decide how to charge for those words has everything to do with the data management that you're giving them. So if you're not giving them any data, there's a very good chance they're not showing you that you're not giving them enough. So when we're talking about driving traffic to your blog. You're really not. You're attracting it. You're attracting those, those spiders that are following human behavior. They're following human behavior, right? They want to know what people are interested in. They want to know what people are sharing. Does anybody know what the number one search engine is right now? Does anybody know number two? Not as of day before yesterday. LinkedIn. Choo-hoo! How important is your title in your keywords? How important is that topic sentence? When you share anything on social media, now let me just kind of back up. We've got copy. That's, that's the goal. The goal is getting somebody to do something specific on your website, to purchase from you at that moment. And you've got breadcrumbs to that copy, which is your content. It's your audio, video, blog text, infographics, and branded images. But no one sees that unless you're using social media. And when you're hitting a social media button and sharing that information out there, your title is getting shared and your topic sentences are getting shared. So the way you choose that information is very important. We can't be cute because people don't really understand cute. They want to know what you're talking about. What do you mean by that? And so being very, very clear and using keywords in that area is going to help attract the type of business that you want. So does everybody have a little better understanding of SEO? Did that help? Who did that help? Did that help? <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to ask you another thing. How many of you realize that there's really just two types of visitors that come to your website? There's really only two. I call the first one the tire kicker. There's more of them than anybody else. I, this is not a bad thing. I'm not disparaging this person. We've all been this person. I've been this person, you've been this person. They want it cheap, they want it on time, they want it quick. That's really all I care about. Your expertise matters not. I just want to know how cheap can I get it, how fast can I get it, can you work in my time frame, blah, 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 blah. 
If you chase, if you work all your, all the time with this customer, you're not going to make any money, as I mentioned earlier. However, we really have a poverty mindset in America. We're afraid to let go of this because if the phone's ringing all the time with that, what happens if you don't take care of that? What happens if you don't do that? You're going. Are you going to lose money? Well, see, now that's a question, right? That look on your face is exactly what America is saying today. But what I want you to know with your content when we're attracting people is if you will put your focus on that guy, put all your emphasis on answering all his questions, give him everything for free, which all of you who design websites for other people know how hard it is to convince a business owner to give away free information, right? They don't want to do it. They don't want to give away anything for free. Why would I do that? No one's going to call me if I do that. But if you do, if you do, if you take care of all of this, what you're setting yourself up for, friends, is to be the authority in the industry. You've answered all the questions. You've made it clear. You've made someone else a rock star because they came to your website and found exactly what they needed. They're excited and they're going to share it because no one else has this and they can't wait to tell other people about it. When they do that, you, what you have is a tier two thinking. Very similar to networking. Chances are we, we are not each other's customers. Chances are who we know. We are developing a referral base, right? Same thing with social media, same thing with all your blog content. You're really making it more available to the person who would share it with their friends than you are your customer. Think about it in terms of that when you're developing your content. Give them something that they want to share with other people that make them look awesome. Does that make sense? Okay. So in the process of doing that, what's going to happen if search engine search engines are indexing back and forth and they're, beha they're going after human behavior and you've just taken care of this guy who thinks who is now a rock star and can't wait to share your stuff and comes back to your website over and over and over again to look at your stuff, you just encouraged a whole lot of activity and now you're going to be found by the people who can afford to pay for you, that can afford for your, exp the, your experience in the field, for the fact that you have a legal right to do business and you probably have insurance and you probably have a little bit of overhead because you decided to do things right. That customer is the one you want to attract. That's the one that you want to work with. That's your ideal customer. Can we all agree that our ideal customer pays on time? Yes! Our ideal customer was looking for us and found everything that they needed online. Yes! With us. Right? And they can't wait to tell people. And they're also your referrals. They're the ones that are going to call you back over and over again. Right? And they're going to t and tell their friends about you. This is the business that we want. And this is what the Offbeat Business Show and Magazine is all about. We want to make sure business owners know and, and the people that you serve know that you're the rock star. You have everything that you need. Just like Future Media Association, I see some really great synergy here because we want you empowered to do the very, very best that you can. There's nothing you can't do in business today. It's too easy. And, but what, what you need is those resources. What you need is that ability to be known for the thought leadership you bring to the table. Because there's something about each and every one of you that's amazing. And something somebody doesn't know. And you know it. You know it. That's why you're here. That's why you're networking. You know there's something inside of you that wants more. You want to do something. You want to make a difference. How many of you think you can make a difference in this community? Really? Can you? <laughs> yes, you're my group. I love you. I love you all so very much. Because you can make a difference. You absolutely can. But we got an apathetic nation, friends. We got work to do. And if you think you can impact positive change, I'm begging you, baby. Will you get up? Will you embrace the fact that you've got a message out there? And the more, in, it, more engaging that you can make it, the easier it can be, the easier it can be digested by your ideal audience. Oh, man, what's that going to do? That's going to be awesome for your pocketbook. But if that's your goal, <laughs> you're going to mess this thing up. It's not going to be enough to sustain you. Your passion has to be there. You have to be fired up to realize you can make a difference. You can work whatever it is that you're doing. Who can you support? Interesting with real estate. I found somebody, uh, I found some, two different companies doing real estate very differently when it comes to content up in Dallas. Uh, one of them is doing the, uh, the Heart Cafe. Does anybody, has anybody heard of Heart Cafe down here? Um, yeah, they got a bunch of business owners that are going to help. They specifically deal with senior living, living situations. So they decided to niche that out and make sure they got all the businesses that serve senior businesses because guess what's happening to our seniors? They want to go into business. They want to do something. And what they're doing is they're getting them all to how many businesses will serve that group? How can they help them understand? And they, so the real estate agency gets together at a, 
Park City's Club. Have you been there? Sweet. Park, Park City's Club. Park City's Club in Dallas. Oh, very fine. Very fine place to meet. They're not messing around. And they get the people together and they share and, they, and they're this top, top, top of the line real estate. So if we can look and showcase people that are doing things differently, a light bulb just went on, right? Who can you specifically see? You just don't think about that. It's not just who can buy a house. You know, who needs a website? Not just any business. Who are we focused on? Who can we help? Who are we really serving? And that's what our content needs to be about. And every time we do that with our content, we are up and up leveling our game. So I want everybody to know about you and, and my offer for you today. We'll be talking about it in a little bit, but I want to make sure you, you realize that sponsoring the Offbeat Business Show while we are uh, on this upswing is where you want to be. Realize that the reach that we're going to have right now and the impact that we're going to have in our community is amazing, and you want to ride this train, okay? Um, when we're looking back at, at, this, at this worksheet, I want to make sure you've got make your visitors. Make your visitors. You got that covered, right? Rock stars. Everybody got that filled in? That's important. You want to engage your network. Engage your network. That's doing things like this. Bring a friend. Grow this. Our communities aren't networking. You want a bummer for social media. No wonder they don't want to go to social media because they're just, they feel like they're shouting in the dark. I'm not doing anything, right? Why not talk to people we know? Before you leave here today, you should all know each other's social media connections. You should all connect. Make sure you're talking to each other online. Get to know each other. That way you're not shouting in the dark. And that message might not be for you, but it might be for your friend, and you might listen to it and go, hi, I know somebody who needs that, and share it. All of a sudden, have, have we just participated in attracting traffic? We did. We did. Um, develop those networking relationships, but take advantage of new media. Don't miss out on that. I'm so excited <laughs> that you guys are doing the audio and video that you are. Don't let any of it scare you. I've been doing that on my phone Really proud of it, Russ. Um, but this morning, <laughs> my phone fried. And guess what? Your phone can't handle all that stuff. If you start doing it, I, I got some really great information for you on your phone real quick. If you, when, I want you to, to practice doing video when you're in your car and you've got a great idea. And you want to share? Do it. Do that. Okay? And I want you to talk audio. SoundCloud.com, freaking easy audio. The Richardson Copywriter has, has been serving my audience for, since 2006. And it goes out on SoundCloud because it's so easy. The app on my phone makes it easy, clear, beautiful. Uh, it's editable, but I am not into that. <laughs> I need you guys to do that. Um, but w we need to make it as easy as possible. Yes, ma'am? SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com. Because you get to, because you, specifically you can describe. You can fill in the description. You can put a text. Uh, you can put uh, a link in there. You can put... Your tag's in there. So before I close this, do we have a better understanding of what it takes to attract traffic to our blog? Did I answer any questions in this? Yes, no? Do we have any questions in it? Yes, ma'am? Oh, I'm so glad you asked because both of those things are content. When we talk about content, we are absolutely talking about everything on your blog, but we're also talking about your email newsletter, and we're also talking about your social media updates. We're also talking about your info products and the things that you're building as your free giveaways when they sign up for your newsletter. So those, those things are very important. Your, your newsletter is going to go out to those people who gave you their email address. That's a very, very valuable people. That's not just throw something together. That is love these people. Nurture those relationships. Yes, Marion? No, I, I wish I could. I just heard that. <laughs> I heard that from an authority. I heard that from Peggy Hatch. And I went, woo, yes. And it's not hashtags, I can tell you that, because you don't use hashtags in it. No. Well, LinkedIn just opened up their publishing platform. I bet that's huge. That it, that, yeah. Yeah, it, the influencers, the early adopters in, in LinkedIn were only allowed access to the publishing rights in order to accomplish you know, stories, long-form content, and a lot of the ability to share that information with people online on the LinkedIn co community. And they just recently opened that up to everyone. 
So if you go into LinkedIn, if you haven't been there for a while, it's changed. And also the interaction that you're allowed to have with LinkedIn, it'll, it'll actually feed you people that you haven't connected with or anybody that's updated in your profile. So it's the, the new interface is making dramatic changes in the way they provide information. I'm still mad at them because they don't open up their API to, to exchange data as easily as the others. But It's probably just around the corner. But one yeah. thing about LinkedIn is it's, it's a little classier, all right? It, but it definitely depends on your market. Uh, if you there, there's a there's a place for Facebook marketing, and it's absolutely very real, and it's it's going on today. But that LinkedIn factor, depending, especially I think when you're into some into tech, that is a that's a real smart place to be. Does anybody have any other questions about that? When we're talking about title, one thing I will say about newsletters before you go uh, is to understand that that subject line is every bit as important as that title, and it's not the same thing. Remember that. I always make sure your subject line is just engaging, fun. Your subject line in an email newsletter has one job. Does anybody know what it is? Open the letter. Does somebody else have a question? Yes, sir. Oh, those are all very good questions, but here's the thing. If you're, just throwing, if you're just throwing stuff out there, it's not going to be effective. If you have a clear strategy, and here's what you need to do to make sure you do have a clear strategy, is an editorial calendar. You need to look at your entire year and think about what matters in community and what matters to you and strategically think about how you're going to market yourself. I see way too many people doing too many things at one time. I think it's very wise to come up with one subject, decide on one subject per quarter, and really focus on that and drill down on that. And if you think to yourself, wow, that's too redundant, I want to remind you that we learn through repeti repetition. And what you're doing with your content is teaching people that you're awesome. And you're teaching people that you're the one that, that, that's ready for the job. You're the authority thought leader in it. So go ahead and give them that same information. But something beautiful is going to happen to you when you do it. You're going to become so aware and so clear about how you deliver that message that it's going to really excel everything that you do in business. So it is going to increase your, the more you blog, the better, yes. But make sure you're com coming through it with a strategy and you're making sense and good use of your keywords, good use of your title, good use of your topic sentence. Just lead them in. Does everybody understand what an H tag is? Okay. No. All right. <laughs> make sure you're using your header tags, your H tags. Get with a web designer in this room if you don't understand what that is and you're attempting your blog to your blog platform because how you use your H tags is also an SEO factor. You know, it's very interesting that about 60% of SEO criteria is made up of content and social media. So, Susan, you, you brought up a good point, and I want to make sure that uh, maybe you can expand on this. Is um, You know, there are a lot of people doing a lot of things, and I've been guilty of this uh, a lot. And in, in I like to test. You know, the whole point that I do is I test all these things, learn the technology so I can share the the requirements to get from point A to point B on these platforms. However, in a marketing strategy, we want to know and understand strategically how to do each platform. What's, is there, what's a good guideline business owners can use to say, okay, I'm going to be on these platforms and I'm going to provide this much content awesome. or this much interaction for these platforms in a given month, week, quarter, year, whatever interval it happens to be. Because I think that's a big question that, okay, I'm not on, on Instagram. Oh, I'm not on Pinterest. I'm not on this platform. Oh, I'm, the sky is falling. Only it may not be the worst thing that can happen. In, and I think strategy plays into that. So maybe you could speak to that point a little bit uh, in more detail okay. uh, and how that plays into your long-term strategy. First of all, if you don't have a strategy, you're going to try and do everything and, and, and just – Throwing everything out on the wall is not an effect. That's not a strategy. That's going to drive you crazy. You will burn out. There is no passion that keeps that up. You'll go crazy, and you'll go, I hate social media, and I don't want to be any part of it at all. So decide what you are. Definitely real estate should be on, on uh, Instagram and Pinterest. You should be learning those areas. Why? You need that visual. You need the, the picture out there, and that's what, that's what people are buying. Uh, but when we kind of like Twitter, you don't want to – everything can't be a sales message. You have to think about what's your conversational message in these areas. When you want to drive people and attract them into your content, if all you're sending out is information that 
it, it, it's it's nailing that sale too much. I would say one about every, every 10 messages on Twitter should be a sales message. You don't want to have more than that. Your email messages, you probably only want to have about every fourth email. Have something that's salesy. Have somebody bring them into it, that sales page. Other than that, lead them to your content. And that's the same. That's very smart for Facebook and Twitter and every single social media that you do. If, you're, if your copy is the end, end goal and your content is the breadcrumbs there, some of that content is going to go straight to your copy. Some of that content is going to go to more content. It's going to go to more content. It's going to go to more content. It's going to go to more content. You, if you can look at it like that, did, did, did everybody get that? All right. If you can look at your social media approach like that, you'll start seeing how you're going to talk to your ideal client, how you're going to let them know that you exist in these spaces well. Uh, I have two different schools of thought on Facebook when it comes to that because my engagement goes way up when I am super aggressive on my page and I'm told, over and over and over again by professionals I respect to not do that. <laughs> Make sure you're only doing it two or three times. It's about 12 times a day. When I hit it 12 times a day with the Offbeat Business Show and those types of things, get, getting those articles out, uh, my engagement goes up. My likes go up. Everything goes up. It's good for me. But like you said, testing is everything. Is it good for you? And a period of time to test, you it depends. With, with Facebook, I would attempt a strategy for a good couple of weeks before I made a decision on it, maybe even a month. What would you say, Marion? Wouldn't you test at Facebook for about a month? Yeah, but I just mean, in, uh, sure, but as far as the frequency and, and what people are listening to, right? Yeah. I think you, you need to, on a regular basis, do that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm, if, when I'm doing that. Getting consistent is huge. I've just hired on a media company, and coordinating those things is a little tricky. This will be an interesting next couple of weeks how we get that all done, right? I want it done this way, but I think it should be done this way. <laughs> we got to go through that for a little. Yes. If you're not using one, you're doing too much work. You're doing too much work. I love Hootsuite. I love Buffer app. They're brilliant. Here's the thing about Hootsuite. Never send your Facebook post update. Never schedule it through a third-party app. Do you all know that? Okay. Yeah. Never. You can, you can schedule Facebook right inside Facebook. If you've got a Facebook page, you can schedule your, your – look in the box. You look like you haven't seen that. On your Facebook business page, not on your, not on your personal profile. You've, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can schedule that, and you can go as, as advanced as long as you want. Don't thirty third-party app your Facebook stuff. They're a little stuck up, and they're not going to share you. Mm. Hootsuite. Yeah, you need Hootsuite. Yeah. Uh -huh. and what I love about Buffer, Twitter just started doing. They give me suggested posts. Here's the other. Here's the other way you're going to draw magnetize your audience to you is you're not sharing just your stuff. That's why networking is so important. If I like your message, I'm going to share it. Hey, that was cool. That was good for me, right? This is, this is what matters. If I'm sharing just my stuff, I'm going to bore my audience. I need to make sure as a thought leader in my industry that I'm sharing other people's things too, that I'm bringing that whole school of thought to the table. Did you have a question? Mm -hmm. I'll, I, 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 I'm not going to be graded like that. <laughs> I'm just not going to do that to myself. But a lot of people do see, see that as an advantage. But we can't be comparing ourselves against a number like that. No, you're, you're, you're excellent. You're coming to business in America to do a, a stellar job and to do something above uh, what other people really understand. You're going to give them everything you got, right? So don't let something else grade you based on did you bark enough. And that's, that's kind of what they do. Well, I didn't know that. Forgive me. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Because I don't mess with it. Okay. Now, I didn't even know it had that ability, so forgive me. I really didn't. I thought we were talking just about that cloud number. I, I'm always like, oh, please, no, no. <laughs> don't, for sure. Buffer doesn't, uh, you know, do you, do you know you can share when you've got your Buffer app Icon, you can also share your Facebook status page update through Buffer. So that's pretty cool, too. You're also getting that out. In your, okay. Did anybody have any other questions for me? Thank you for your time today. Yes, ma'am? Uh-huh. 
What do you love? What lights you up? Mm-hmm. And they're not using them. It drives me crazy. Wonderful. Uh-huh. Okay, so you're a teacher. Okay. So find that type of information and sit down and look at your editorial calendar. Think about this. What, in, what are you involved in socially in your community? Yeah, the networking meetings. All right. Uh, then look, go through meet, go through your meetup meetings and see how far in advance you can understand what they're doing and what they're promoting, and make sure you're connecting with them and promoting them on your website and making that part of what you do. Your community strategy should be a big deal. People and and people should know what you're doing. Uh, one a biggie for me is keep uh, keep Plano beautiful, keep America beautiful. Whenever they do those, you, I like to have that on my website and let people know about it. That community interest is going to help you draw draw them and make a connection between you and them and help you realize where you might focus. I think it's worth sharing. You know, to your point. Yeah. Make it, make it worth sharing. Make it suitable. Motivate others to share it. Just by the, the content itself. Okay. And what I'm doing, when I'm, when I'm, whenever I write anything, is I'm thinking, I'm visualizing the person that's asking me those questions. I can see them. They're right here. I, I, I take up those few moments to go, okay, what? because that same person's asking me this question, they're asking me this question, and that when I answer it like this, they're going to think this. You can, get in it. You know, get in it. But visualize that person. Did that help? That helps. Wonderful. One more yes, sir. Mm-hmm. What's the first step is get with somebody uh, to start, whether or not you do a website, a lot of people would say, don't mess around with WordPress.com first. But while you're just deciding what your message is, I don't see that there's a big problem with learning on a 2.0. It's still called a 2.0, those 2.0 sites like WordPress or Blogger. Uh, well, get on something like that that's free so you can think about the strategy of your message. You're not going to have near the functionality other people do when they there develop an There are free sites all website. over that you can have a, amazing mm-hmm. Visual imaging. Because Tumblr's free, too. Right? Yeah. Well, Tumblr's free. Uh, they just released another one that ties directly to LinkedIn, which is branded, branded.me, which you can actually publish your awesome. own URL to as well. They're actually really powerful link juice to what you're doing. So, um, and I forget his name, but he had a great question in the beginning. Someone did. You know, for are you should you be concerned about backlinks or social media? And I've Larry, studied SEO. I'm not taking on SEO clients. I'm just I, I have my own product. Uh, SEO these days, I've I've watched you know Google take everybody through these algorithm changes, and people go out of business, and a lot of SEO people went out of business a few years ago. And what it boils down to today is massive content and the social signals, and those tumblers, those. I mean, if you want a list of them, I can give you a list. But if you put content on those uh, and then you even send some backlinks to those to even give juice to that. But, but those are juice in itself. Like I'm, I'm putting content on all those for some local clients and, and it will sometimes just rank a video. It'll rank something because it's if you do like a dozen of them and even set it up so you can log in real quickly to all of them and um, it, it's powerful stuff. So just wanted yeah. to share that because it's, it's, uh, it's good stuff. We used to do that. I'll tell you what. It's, it, that's a lot of work, and I don't know that that's as necessary today to go to, to be that extravagant with it, but it's something that, that, yeah, nobody ever said it doesn't work. Yeah. There you go. Yeah.
the biggest part of duplicate content But your chain of events is, is, is important to understand when it comes to that. So it goes a little heavier than that, and duplicate content really can happen on your own website when, you don't, when you've got the same content on two different URLs yeah. on your very own site, and that's a little, more, uh, a little stronger. Yeah, and yeah. you have to be very strategic when you start doing yeah. that. So it's, uh, you know, it's a different. So it is. Friends, I just wanted to thank uh, you so much, Susan. Uh, say goodbye. Thank you. I hope that we've developed some synergy here. Uh, that if you've got questions, I hope you realize that I am your resource, and I would love to help you understand how to put those things together. Please consider getting involved with the Offbeat Business Magazine. I've got specials in here today for how you may want to sponsor your own business and be a part of this movement. People that are involved in the Offbeat Business Magazine have their articles put out in two different ways. Uh, if you're a contributor and if you're a sponsor and, and, and create an ad, we have this available on the website in a blog format that's getting some serious promotion, as well as a beautiful digital magazine that is appealing to people that can sit down on the weekend and open it up and, and tab through it and really enjoy that experience. Uh, so get with me and talk to me about that. I'd love to share you, showcase you, and I'd love for you to be a part of this incredible journey. Thank you for your attention. And how, how do people find you? Uh, people find me at offbeatbusiness.com. I'm also a uh, content therapist if you are having trouble finding a ways to put, put your language together. I love that. Okay. I can help you get your message right. I do uh, programs every single month. And if you get if 10 of you today are interested in doing a workshop here, I'd be happy to come back next month at this time and do a workshop for you. Nice. Thank you so much. Give Susan a round of applause. Great content. Great use of time. So, And Marion, what's, no, what's up next? Oh, my goodness. Do we have some announcements? Okay. So this is so exciting. That it's, have you ever seen two kids stand and hold each other's hands and they're jumping up and down? Or people that just won the lottery? Well, that's what Russ and I were doing this last week because guess what? Podcast Movement 2015 is allowing, they've asked, Russ to hold a full day workshop in Dallas. Yeah, so teaching uh, podcasting with uh, Joel and Dr. Pay. They run the... Uh, relaunch podcast up in uh, dallas fort worth area so we're going to be putting together a a full day workshop for so podcasting. guess who's uh, one of the volunteers who's the lead volunteer yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right yeah so come up a day early and take his workshop how cool would that be right that is in fort worth and what are the dates on that july 31st july 31st and i think it's from 8 a.m till 3 p.m Okay. So it's in Fort Worth, and we're all of information. Gonna, we're going to party. We're going to have fun, and you get to meet all the top podcasters in the world. They all come here to podcast movement. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a blast. So what else we got? So, so we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, upcoming meetings. What else do we have in terms of um, real? We'll be sharing that, and it's uh, you know track us down on Twitter, follow us on Facebook. We share all of this information on a regular basis and repost it, not 12 times a day, but we, we can't be aggressive. <laughs> so we do want that, to Susan. encourage you to come back. We want your information. We want your questions. We want to train you and bring in the experts that you want. So we're really asking for that. See that thing up right up here? And we now have, see that box in the back? That is now a big projector that's going here. We can Skype people in from anywhere in the world. So all you have to do is tell us what you want to learn, and we're going to find the experts for you, okay? Plus, I want to let you know that Russ and I have decided that every single meeting, we're going to allow you to pick our brains. I hate that terminology. I don't want anybody picking my brains, but we're going to actually allow you to do that for an hour. So you can sign up for that on our Eventbrite, and we'll talk about anything you want to about your business. Anything, and you get us both for an hour after each meeting. You so can interrogate for us it. for an hour. There you go. We'll help you with anything that you want. There's a lot of knowledge up there. <laughs> All right, anything else? So uh, what's the next meeting? What's oh. the next event we got coming up? We got another, coming, uh, another event coming up yes. that is uh, on. Yes. Well, it, what do you we, want to learn? What do you want to learn the next time? Pick a topic. I'll find the expert for you. What do you want to learn? 
YouTube videos. People making appointments? Okay, so, so maybe we could do some a class technology. On, on, we could use uh, a class on uh, assistant two. Yes, that, or that's what I was thinking. Acuity. Yes, acuity, or schedule acuity. once, or any go. of these platforms. Okay, that good. Lock a schedule yeah, in. So video. that's that's my vote. Make Who wants to learn more about video and how we can get video? the message out? All right, that's the next one. We're going to find a really good expert on it. Sure, sure, and we may we may actually uh, do a sidebar with podcasting and and take that into a maybe we'll have a daily uh, maybe a workshop at some point in time. Put that local podcasting workshop would be good. So, any other thoughts, recommendations, suggestions? I mean, you are the community. You are you know you are the media. You have a voice right here today, so don't be afraid to share it. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know why that is. Who owns that company? Who owns it? Yeah, Google. All right. They're the king, the queen, and the princess. So that's that's a big one. You can actually record directly from a Google Hangout, and it's called Hangouts on Air, where it actually records real time into YouTube, and then it's yeah, it's pretty it's pretty slick. We all want to promote our children, right? And that's Absolutely. what it is. It's you know they bought uh, what was it? What did they buy recently? Is it Instagram or I don't know? They bought something else that's really big, and I thought, okay, there we go. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we have some door prizes. Did everybody get your your business cards in? Everybody has a business card. All right. Susan, would you like to do your door prize first? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you can win. All right, Bruce. Excellent, excellent. Congratulations. All right, Lady Lou, the baby boomer babe. Awesome. Yeah. Check it out. Two people starting their brand new business, and they're going to be in the offbeat business ma- business show and magazine. All right. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You ready for the next one? All right. So this isn't quite as good as that, but to me, it's just as good. Because I listen to podcasts every single day. Who doesn't, right? So you get the choice of pink or purple. If you're, oh, let's see. Oh, Janet. Janet. Janet Scudder. Scudder. All right. What you got? These are, would you like pink or purple? They're earbuds. They're beautiful. They're modern purple. Okay, that's this one. That's this one? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's pull for one more. Awesome. I can't look. Who's it going to be? <gasps> Heather Arnold. Yay! There you go. And then, it, does anybody here have an iPhone 4 or 4S? You do? Hey. <laughs> it's a All microphone. Right, right. It's a Yeah, it's a microphone. You just stick your iPhone in there, and it blasts out your music and whatnot. So, Great yeah. Cool. 
Awesome. So, so we want to wrap it up, and, and Susan brought up a great point, and I think it's important that we understand this. Right now, today, we have the opportunity to connect with several people that we haven't met previously. We may not know. We may not know what you do or anything about your business, but I think, I think we can wrap the meeting up, and I'm sure some of you have to leave. However, I think it's important that you take a few minutes meet someone else that you don't know, exchange your, your social feeds, your, you know, your connections, and, and figure out what you can do. You know, find some basis of you know, connection. You know, it's a real estate. Everybody needs a house. You know, there's, everybody needs a, a brand, right, authority. And uh, I, I know that you'll want to connect with Susan before she heads back uh, to the warmer climate, right? <laughs> And so, so let's not let's not waste the opportunity, and don't be shy about it. Uh, you know, if you need an introduction or you want some uh, assistance with that, I'll be happy to help. Marion's always happy to help. There's people in the room that are are great at introductions. Louise, she's always uh, willing to uh, provide some introductions to two complete strangers. So, with that being said, thank you so much for being here, and we'll wrap it up and allow you to network a little bit and. Uh, Finish up your meal and enjoy your day. Thank you to our new sponsor, Maylin Hargrove. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, the next meet, yeah, it's every, it's the second and fourth Tuesday of it every month. And for right now, we're going to be right here, right? Second and fourth Tuesday, 11 o'clock, right here. And the next one will be on video. So we're going to cover a lot of information on oh, that yeah. one, right? That'll be good. And we may even have to use the screen. So we'll have to see how that. Yeah, yeah. brand new screen is going to yeah, be we'll up get the here. screen up. So. Awesome. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you so much. Give yourself a hand.